Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of the eCourse Domination Podcast. And today I'm very, very thrilled to have Terry Amento with me. She is a highly skilled presenter and in, in a very uh, narrow niche. And so today we're going to be talking about how to succeed online teaching in a, in, in a, speci- a specialized niche and where best to publish those those courses because obviously you can be very successful online in a niche as long as you know where to to go so welcome terry thank you so much it's a pleasure to be here i i love uh chatting i'm sure all of you by the end of this interview and and lab you'll all know that uh i love uh spreading the news about forensic science but more importantly um for you uh, Tim, you know, I've been listening to your podcast for a while, and what really kind of got to me, I think it was episode 17, we were talking about the different types of platforms, uh, and it's great to finally talk about uh, what I've done right and what I've done not so right, and perhaps others, you know, will kind of chime in and realize that, you know, just because you have this specialized niche, the specialized, in, um, I guess, community, you can be successful. You just have to kind of figure out where you're going to go with it. So thank you. It's great to Perfect. be here. No, fantastic having you. So before we get started, can you just give us a little bit of background on yourself so people can go to get to know you a little bit better? Sure. Um, I have a program called Forensic Training Unlimited, and it specializes in offering hands-on training, forensic training for students. Uh, With the onset of all these CSI shows and specifically when here in the United States, I'm sure everybody knows about O.J. Simpson, um, what came about is that we realized that there wasn't any type of standardized, um, uh, uh, I guess, SOP, standard operating procedures for individuals who are in forensics, how to collect evidence. So depending upon what agency you work for will depend upon how you're going to collect evidence. So right. back in 1998, this particular program was born. Um, I am not the founder of that. Uh, it was started at a local college here in Southern California. And let's move fast forward to that. I began teaching in that particular program. Uh, my specialty is, is in DNA, and I currently work in a lab doing that, manipulating DNA. And from that, it kind of built and was born my, my teaching career. But in between all that, um, I have specialized training from uh, the coroner's office, law enforcement, uh, Orange County sheriffs, um, belong to lots of forensic uh, organizations and groups and have spoken at those particular organizations. So I've been doing this teaching, this crazy stuff uh, for about 15 years. And about four years ago, I decided to kind of translate what I could hands-on wise to why not an online platform? Um, and again, it's because of the what I'm into, forensics, it's kind of hard to do that because mm-hmm. you know people want, hey, you know what, I want to know about uh, bullet trajectory. How can I learn that online? Well, you really can't. So there's certain things that we can do, and there's certain things that we can't do online. So receive my education, teaching, I love it. Uh, I'm teaching now a criminalistics course. At a, at a major university here in, in Southern California, and I'm just sick for this stuff. So <laughs> I just love forensics, and I, I just want to bring that to the student world, and because there's a lot of students there that uh, have received their education, but they need the training in order to be noticed, be a viable candidate for a position. Awesome. And 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 as you're saying, that you are, you're basically providing a blended uh sort of solution, aren't you? So, so you've got workshops and you've got face-to-face components. And then of course you've got um, an online component. So, so, so what are you doing there? Are you, are you, are you mainly doing most of your, your, your theory in an online situation, then you bring them into a workshop or a, or a face-to-face? Um, it's, it depends. If the, the student is in the immediate area of where our hands-on training is located, again, here in Southern California, Uh, then yes, they can take advantage of that. But I'm getting more and more students, not only in the United States, but outside of the United States, that they know that there is no type of specialized training um, that they can take. So it was really from the the clue of of that, you know, you start listening to your, the people that are emailing you, 
uh, and you start looking at what do they really need. And as I've been learning from all of you and some of the people that are in here, you know, you have to fill a problem. You have to provide a solution to a problem. And I learned early on that, you know what, I can get this specialized training and kind of mind meld it, if you will, and, and provide it in an online format. So if, again, individuals uh, are in Southern California, here's your hands-on training, but individuals that are not and can't come, uh, let's say if you're in Texas or Florida or Australia, we mm. do have uh, training programs or training classes for those students. Mm. Okay. And then once again, there's, there's so many things that came out of that. Uh, what you've just said is, is firstly, you didn't just sort of build it and wait for them to come. You were actually identifying a need and then addressing that need. And I think a lot of, a lot of instructors, this is, this, this is where a lot of them fall short is that they, they want to teach what they want to teach, but they're not teaching what people want to learn. Right. And and you have that you have that disconnect, and then and then they go, why isn't anybody buying my courses? <laughs> and it's because you're not you're not addressing that need. Because basically, if you can take away a pain, or you can so so so, so people are either moving away from something, or moving towards something, right? They're either moving away from something they don't want, or they're moving towards something they do want. And unfortunately, by human nature. Um, we're driven more by what we don't want than what we we do want, right. like like our like, like our fears and our pains and and our failures and everything else. So if you produce something that is going to become a solution to that pain, then it's going to be successful. So that's that's very important that you. So so how did so did you did you survey people or did you just sort of compile a list from of uh, like a a core list of questions from communications? I did I did a actually a combination. Of I had a lot of students when we were uh, advertising, for example, we have a 40 hour basic crime scene investigation module. And that is again, hands on. I had a lot of students from outside of you know California saying, Hey, you know, where can I get this training at? And I started looking around the States here in the United States. Was there anything that I could refer the students, you know, outside of California to? And I found that there were only three, that would accept students in, in a training type uh, environment. Most forensic training programs are geared for people who are already in the field, okay? And so that was a big eye opener for me. I'm thinking, hey, you know what? These students wanna get into the field and I know what it was when I was trying to get into it. You know what? I don't need another training program to train people who are already you know, 20 years into their forensic career I got to develop a program that will cater to ooh, the students that are recently grads, the students that want to be uh, a forensic uh, professional, or even high school students that are gearing towards going into college and you know have all these questions. Because again, you would look at our TV shows, it's everywhere. You can't get away from a forensic related program. You just can't, they're everywhere. So actually that's good for me. So, and other programs too. So I can't take the credit for everybody's program. Mm. I did a combination, it's a combination mm. of everything. But you really have to listen to those emails and not only read them, but really listen to them. And I did uh, one step further. You know, of course, I would respond to the students, um, but you know, I would give them my number, my Google number, and you know, engage in a conversation. Really, what do you want to see? You know, what is going? What do you need in order to get where you need to go? It was from those intimate conversations that I kind of piled up and generated, okay, here's my plan. This is what I'm going to do. And I mm. just did it. Awesome. Yeah, perfect. Answering questions. So saying like, and as you said, uh, throughout, throughout the call, I will be in, uh, welcoming people in. So uh, I see Paula's here and she's also been a, a guest on my podcast. So welcome. And I know uh, she's, a, she's a very good uh She's, she's a, a very good accountant, so she so she's got a background in, and she does her Excel courses. If you also want to give your if you if your name isn't obvious from your from your uh, handle, please put that in too. I'd like to sort of refer to you better than you know, Mummy Freelance or Great Speech Co. So, but welcome. And what and what we'll do is we'll address some of these things. If, if you've got specific questions, please put them into the chat. And if they are on topic, then no Terry. 
in case you've got time, she will answer them. And then what we do, what we'll do at the end of this call is we'll open up that seat. So if you actually want to jump in and have a chat, uh, we'll do that at the end of the call. So, but but welcome everybody who's coming on and, and please feel free to use a chat. If you've got a question, just put a slash Q and then your question and that, and that, that will highlight it as a question that, that, and that will get our attention. And also please over on the left-hand side, you'll see a little, uh, tell a little bird. If you want to click that and invite your followers along, that would be awesome. Okay, now we have got a highly niched subject and I think you've, you've got to go where your pers prospective students are. And my opinion is, I might be wrong, but I don't think anybody who wants to get some more specialist knowledge in forensic science will be jumping onto a platform like Udemy to find that, I think. What was what was your have you have you're, you tried? You're actually you're never wrong. You're spot on. Um, I decided to start with Udemy because uh, my actually my sister suggested it. I can't remember how long ago it was, and I developed uh, one course for Udemy, and it, it sold very well. Um, but like most of us, and that I've learned here from you and Mark and Eileen's in here too, um, you know, usually your first course is not your best. And I look back on it and think, what was I thinking, right? So mm -hmm. I developed that course and it had to do with uh, the 10 essential steps uh, to get a forensic job, okay? Uh, and that was pretty successful. Um, and then I developed a second course and that was more specialized and that had to do with drowning deaths and forensic evidence, the type of evidence that one would see in cases like that. And I'll tell you honestly, you know, that course did not do well at all. And here was part of my problem, my hesitation, even though I went ahead with the course anyway. My particular topic is not one for exploitation. You know, I, I, was, a, I was kind of concerned. Um, hey, what type of student am I attracting? And will they be able to, you know, get this particular information regarding, you know, the death cases in this drowning course and show them to their friends and, hey, put it on Tumblr, put it on this, that. I was concerned about that, so I scaled back mm -hmm. on what cases I was using. And again, that course did not do very well. And I took a step back and I was really kind of searching, what am I going to do here? So as of this recording, I know that Udemy is not for my particular specialized topic. It is not. And I will tell you I am using it in a different manner. And that's more for leads. I'll put courses up there that have to do with the generalness of finding a forensic job or the generalness of, of starting a forensic career or what is a forensic accountant, what does a crime scene investigator do, what does a death, you know, things like that to generate it. So I'm going to stick with uh, Fedora on, on my particular uh, courses. And actually, I'm doing very well with that. So you were right. It, you to me, again, I can't speak for all the specialized niches out there. And we all have one. Uh, but like you said in that particular podcast, you know what? If your your niche doesn't fall within the top three, those subject matters, it doesn't mean that you won't be successful. It just means that perhaps you have to find another avenue. So that's what mm. I did. Exactly. It's the... Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I think, and, and the other side too is is when you is when you're sharing specialized knowledge, you you don't want to give it away for you know, for ten dollars, right? right? And and because we are talking vertical market, you are talking a, a specific niche, and 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 your audience and and your your prospective audience is a lot narrower and and, and more defined and more focused to start with. And when you're giving away this this incredible information which is which is you no know, premium you no know, that they're not going to find in other in other places you you don't want that to hit hit a special and go for and go for ten dollars so, so you need to be in a like in in total control of your particular pricing and everything else and and i guess the other thing too is that with 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 you to me I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a shift, and I'm, I'm using Udemy exactly the same way that you are. I'm using Udemy now as a lead generation, and, um, and just, and, and, and the, and the courses there. If they sell for ten dollars, 
I'm not going to I'm not going to lose sleep. I'm quite happy for them to sell for ten dollars. They're not ten dollar courses. I think that that's the other point we should always mention that don't fill Udemy up with with garbage. Fill you know still put quality courses up. But but you no, know, probably you know, offer a course that, you know, that that you believe is worth say a hundred dollars value to somebody, and it's, it's not going to hurt if it goes for for ten dollars. You're not going to lose sleep. But I think your premium stuff, you no, know, like you no, know, when you're just you know, doing your major brain dump, and you are actually going to have a major impact on somebody's career, and they're going to go off and you know, be able to generate like, like like get a a promotion or get a job and and earn thousands of dollars based on what you're teaching. You've got to be in control of that, correct? Right. And, and another thing is that my name will carry more weight in the forensic world than a Udemy certificate. OK, so a certificate signed by me, whether it's online, because I offer that for my students or on site, it's signed by the lead instructor and myself. It will carry more weight in their their portfolio when they go for a job interview. The Udemy certificate is not going to do that in fact you know it will in a sense discount like you were saying before it will discount that particular knowledge because you know what the local crime agency or law enforcement agency they don't know anything about Udemy, but they do mm. know terry Armenta and they do know forensic training unlimited so that is going mm. to carry more weight than what Udemy has to offer so mm. you know i was kind of struggling do i stay with Udemy? Or do I just abandon the platform altogether? And again, it was from listening to some of these people, including yourself, I started doing, like, scaling back and started doing some other types of courses that perhaps wouldn't fit in the top three subject matters. But still, if people are looking, then you know what? You can't discount a lead. I mean, a lead is a lead. You never know. You can generate exactly right. other types of, of leads from that and as well as income. So I did a lot of, I guess, for soul searching before I decided to go with Fedora. Mm. I must admit too, like, and I think it, it does come down to your audience because there are very niche courses. I know somebody on Udemy who does very, very well in a very, very narrow niche. Um, it, it's like a handcraft, like an embroidery and that sort of stuff. And and they do and they do really well. But obviously, out of the eight million people. That that audience is going to go looking at Udemy to get that to get that knowledge. I, and, and, but as I'm saying, like people who are looking to advance in, in, in forensic science aren't going to go on to you no know, Udemy to go looking. Just like if, you know, if if I want to buy a quality car, I'm not going to go to you know, like a, you know, right. a general. You know, so 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 yeah. it's, it's it's where you go for the market. So i so I've also got experience because I, I I created a niche course as well in in because my I've got a background in working with elite elite athletes. I, I work with something called AFL football over here, Australian Rules Football, which is like our national game. Um, and I did I did I did a course on how to strap ankles and thumbs and and fingers and that sort of stuff. So once yeah, again, you had it attached to your head, right? Did you? Yeah. Yeah. So so that so that sells through the same sort of thing. Like I do a workshop. And then I say, if you, you know, you're probably going to forget 90% of what I've just shown you because, you know, but if you want this course, just jump over here and grab it. And I'm actually going to, like, the only reason why that, that turned up on Udemy is because I had trouble with my host. If the, the security on my host was was so tight that it wouldn't let the the what is it, the API calls between the the e-commerce cart and JVZoo and this sort of. So I was setting up a, a um, an affiliate program on on JVZoo, and my host is just so tight with the security that the pieces would not fit together. And then I put it up onto Udemy. And then the people who said that they were going to JV with me said, we're not going to JV with you while it's on Udemy because we just can't work out the affiliate program. So now I'm shifting again. But so, so you, when you, when you've got these, these uh, on Fedora and, and these niche and, and, and highly, you know, professional and, and structured courses how do you go about promoting them where do you where do you go to actually get your students because you, you're not getting that that sort of uh, organic flow from you to me right not getting that that big you know push like uh, everybody's used to or i should say everybody is used to from you to me you know i i started off with a small list and it was i think at the time um 
less than a thousand. Um, remember, I've been teaching in this program since 2000, uh, 2001. Okay. And I went through the program in 2000 and then I started teaching because at the time the program didn't have anything about DNA and forensic science at all. So, and I started teaching in 2001. So I had that base of students starting from 1998. Okay. And throughout the course of the years, I have kept in touch with, I would say probably a quarter of those students. And we, our class sizes at the time, I remember the first time I taught on site, I had 73 students. And as a first time, wow. first time teacher, I'm going, what have I done? What am I going to say? So, you know, for all you teachers out there, you understand what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I kept in touch with them. And so we go forward to now, you know, I have a lot of students that are now working as a forensic uh, professional, uh, people, law enforcement, private investigators, crime scene investigators, death field investigators. So they're out there. So guess what they do? People want to know, hey, how did you get the job? Well, I went over here. Okay, so then my list grew. So I have this list, like most people do, because they always say the money's in the list. Mm -hmm. I have the list that is growing daily because I do have a web page. I do uh, now have a secret um, a closed group for Facebook because they have to opt in for that, really. Um, and it's more of an application because I want to know if these people are serious. Again, you know, the subject matter that I'm presenting is not one to say, hey, here we go. Here's, you know, a dead body. And I get some of those students, they want to see that. And it's more, it's not of a sensitive nature at all. They just want to see what, you know, they want to exploit it. And yeah, then of yeah. course, you know, I have my own web page for me uh, because I do a lot of uh, career fairs and things like that. I'm going to go to one um, in a couple of weeks because again, high school students want to know. So I have that type of um, like a funnel, if you will, people coming and looking to see, hey, what is forensic science? How do I get in and what is the nearest program that I can attend? So I will be advertising, start putting out there, of course, social media, the list that I have. And you know what? Believe it or not, word of mouth, because mm. if people are serious, they're going to start calling who, you know, the lo local law enforcement agency. They're going to look at the colleges and things like that. So that's how I do it. And it, mm. it has been very well. It's been a great turnout. Um, I just want to really get the word out there that if you want to get trained in, in forensics, you know, there are programs there. You just got to, you got to find them because it's like you said before, sir, it's so specialized and so narrow. It's difficult to find. I'll tell you that it's really difficult. And I've looked, mm. I've looked. Mm. For sure. Once again, it's going to welcome people onto the, onto the call. And uh, yeah, we're looking at Fedora. Fedora is a great free site. I'm actually investigating another site called Ed Loud at the moment, which is, Probably even a little bit different. I'm I'm looking at more an inter, uh, interactive, uh, so set, set up with. I don't I don't believe in this, and this is what we'll talk about too. I don't. I think we're at a at a, a real crossroads with 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 online education, and and there's and there's going to be two very definite ends of the scale. We're going to have the definite. Um, that's it. Loud. I'll just drop a link in. It is a. Uh, it is an affiliate link. I make no apologies for using affiliate links, but um, I think that there's, there's, there's going to be two very, two very distinct ends. Like we're going to we're going to have public. Basically, at the moment, all things like Udemy are is their glorified information products. Okay, people jump on, they they they, they shoot a video, they drop it. Now, some instructors are good. They they engage. They answer questions. Some instructors don't even answer answer questions. They just they see it as a as a money making venture. They make you no. Know, they make their course. They drop it. And there's and, and and there's no there's no education there. It's just it's just watch this video. I think education is when you uh, make yourself available as a teacher in lifetime and actually drag that student along to the learning objective. Don't 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 let them drop off. And so. I mean, getting on there and doing live stuff every week, interacting with them, helping them through their questions, but also coax, you know, coaching them through and saying, "Don't leave it, don't drop it, don't don't think it gets too hard." I'm here to help come through, and so and 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 for that, and for that level of commitment, you can charge a premium price. Okay, so if you're just going to do a a course, you know, a handful of videos, and and, and just drop it and run, 
and you're happy to take 10 bucks, that's fine. But at the other, and at other end of the scale where you are actually there and you are interacting and you're making yourself available and you are drawing, like at the end of the day, people take something because you want to take a pain away. There's a learning, there, there is an objective. And I think as a teacher, we've got to take them to that objective. And I suppose, it, because I've got a teaching background as, yeah. as with you, you know, face to face. So I'm, you know, I'm used to, uh, and even mentoring and coaching, because that's, that's also what you do. I've, I've looked at your website. Like you don't just drop a course up there. No, you, you know, you're a mentor. You're a, no, no, you're a coach. You're highly regarded. And you're highly regarded because people have that accessibility to you. Well, I think you hit it. You hit it perfectly. Again, you're, you're, you're two for two now here. Um, you know, I know for my specialty, I can't just drop a video. I have to start showing them. Um, you know, I, I'm interested, much like you are, to find something that is more interactive, um, live lectures. Yes, does it take the time away? It does. But my objective is not to save my time. My object, objective is to share my knowledge and teach them the how. How do you lift a bloody print or do you? You know, how do you document a crime scene, you know? What type of fingerprint powder do you use on glass? What type of fingerprint powder do you use on metal? You know, things like that. I can, of course, you know, tell them, but I want to show them the why. So I'm looking more towards interactive. I'm, I'm going to be hosting a, a live lecture because, again, I'm, I'm teaching a criminalistics class uh, online, and I'm going to be doing a live lecture right after um, this lab uh, wow. about a particular case, and I'm going to be using Zoom, zoom.us. So it's the very first time I've used it, and I've had other people say, hey, it looks, it works great, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to be doing that, but like you, because I am a teacher at heart. Yeah, the forensics is in me, but I love teaching. I love showing mm. and sharing. Um, so I'm looking for platforms that will allow that, because I, too, am not happy just to drop a video in. It, it just... Again, it could work, uh, and it does for other specialties, but I, it does not work for mine. Mm. So, you know, that could be a blessing or a curse. I don't, I don't exactly. know. Exactly. Just gotta find the way. There is a way, and like you said, with technology coming like it is before, it's not like when you and I went to school. You know, you have to be there on site. You no, know, God forbid, if you took anything kind of online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's not like that anymore. So, mm. with all these avenues to find knowledge to learn. I don't want to be considered an individual that just puts the forensic stuff out there just because I can. I'd rather be known to put the information out there in a quality type of format and be the mentor. You know, it doesn't stop with me when they've taken a course. I want to know what happened in that interview. I want to know what did you get? Take your, take your portfolio with you. Do you have a portfolio? I'm hounding my students constantly and I tell them like it is. I, I always tell mm. them, I ask them, how bad do you want it? And if you want it bad enough, this is what you're going to do. So I have mm. some students that say, okay, Terry, others choose instead kind of drop off. Like we all do, you know, they just, things get in the way, life gets in the way, you know, things. So I can't hold that uh, against them. I just, I just am passionate of bringing them to the door you know, and then shoving them, shoving them through, but I can't mm. do it for them. They've got to do it. So mm. yeah, interactive. I'm all for that. Exactly. I think it comes down to, down to mindset because some people, I suppose, who are in the, in the Udemy mold and look, I said, I'm not, I'm not judging people. People choose and and they and they choose where they want to go. And, and, and there's, and there's room for everybody and there's room for everything. So I'm not, by any, by any means saying that, but but people in, in the Udemy mold, when you talk about going into in, into grad, they go, oh my god, you know, I, I'm, I'm too big. I, I need I need so many students because because you're selling your course for ten bucks, you need you need thousands of students to make money. Well, change just shift your mindset for a minute and and say if you are creating a high quality interactive, where, now where, now where people have access to you, it's high quality premium content, and you can actually demand. A good price for it, so so you can actually demand, you know, four hundred ninety-seven dollars or even nine hundred ninety-seven dollars because, like, like you might put them through a, a three-month or a six-month program, and, and and they have to turn. Well, if, if if they don't turn up, the the, the session's recorded, so they, so they can pick up a recording, but they but they have that option right now. Now, when they when they're when they're you know, paying, 
you know, 497 or $997, a couple of things happen. Firstly, they've got skin in the game. So they're going to they're going to take the course a lot more seriously than somebody who picked up on a free coupon or paid, or paid $10 for it. And the other thing too is that then you don't need to have the numbers, right? You can get 100 people in at 997 and you can, you know, guide them all through and, and, and give them all the attention they need and you're making a good living and they're getting a good result. So it's, 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 it's a mindset thing. Well, the other thing you know what, Tim, I'm sorry. The thing is that, again, my focus is for students and everybody, we've been a student one time or another. So as a forensic professional and a, and a forensic educator, yes, I've taken the courses that have been offered by other programs that, again, are geared towards individuals that are running forensics. And a one day is very typical to be 4.95. You know, one day, eight hour session. And then if you want a workshop on top of that. But I, I had to, like I say, shift my thinking and remember how it was when I was a student. I couldn't afford 490, you know, $500. I mean, that was rent. That was my car payment that, you know. So right. I geared the, the pricing for uh, students, again, for students. But I did not want to discount that, that specialized skill um, on, on Udemy. I just, even though I opted out, again, I'm thinking, what's going to make a difference in these students' lives or, or basically giving them the edge? Because again, you have one, one position open. Uh, there was one position open here in Southern California for a crime scene investigator trainee and over 300 individuals applied, okay? Mm -hmm. So you need mm -hmm. to get that edge, right? So you have a Udemy, like I said before, Udemy certificate or a forensic training and limited certificate. So that was for me the deciding factor. And you know that mindset of you can't, you have to know your audience, you have to know where your audience lives. And I'm telling you, most of my audience did not know, have never heard of Udemy. They didn't know that. But if mm -hmm. you say um, uh, the International Association for Identification, oh yeah, I know that because they've done yeah. their homework. So yeah. I had to kind of switch everything around and put my feet in the students' shoes. And that's how I started doing courses. Mm -hmm. So I just mm -hmm. could not do the Udemy marketplace. And again, it works great for many, 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 many. But for me, it did not, did not. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it will. Uh, and I, I'll tell you that the other avenues I've taken. So, you know, there's a lot of, when we get to the platform questions, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm eager to know what everybody's doing in their, in their suggestions, including mm -hmm. you. Um, mm -hmm. Because I, I too, am still a student. I want to know, I want to learn where to put this information out that my students can find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and that's, and that's, that's the point. Now, I... Um, when I, I think I gave a bit of feedback there. Yeah, the I interviewed Phil Ebner uh, a few months ago for one of my courses, and he said some very interesting stuff, which is which is very much. And even though his his courses weren't so niche niche, he had some very interesting insights as to where you go off Udemy to promote or, or even to uh, to host your courses in other places. And he had these photography courses. And he, he actually even went to photography shops, like, like places where they sell cameras and s online and said, will you promote my course? Now, I'll, now you can be a, an affiliate, you can put a link on your, now, on your website. And so, so this is, and it's the same thing with, with, my, with my strapping course. When I, when I finally get my strapping course onto a platform with an affiliate program that, you know, that I'm happy with, I have, I have JV partners, like I have, I have you know, the biggest tape, most medical tape supplier in Australia ready to promote my course, as long as it's not on the Udemy. So, so this, so you, so you go through, and, and, and you, you've got to be very careful because I said, firstly, I'm in Australia. So my JVs in Australia didn't like the fact that my course was in US dollars. So that's that's why Udemy isn't working there because it, it doesn't give me an option to put my course into Australian dollars, whereas uh, sites like Fedora, Zenla, that sort of stuff do. Right. Um, and also sites like Fedora and Zenla give you the ability to set up your own affiliate program. Um, but there's but, there, but there's so, so many ways, and, and we may even open up the seat soon, and, and people can start to talk about their experiences a bit you now you know, with with platforms, but. 
if you've got if you've got your own list, then yeah, Udemy is, is 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 still good to use as a as a lead generator. But you don't necessarily if you Udemy is good for people who don't have a list, so that you, they they can hook into that eight million students. But all those eight million students may not necessarily be interested in what you're teaching, right? Exactly. So, so you you have to really know where your audience lives. So exactly you know, right. in a sense, because I've been doing this for so long and my name is out there, uh, you know, the universities here that offer uh, forensic related or even forensic uh, degrees and master's programs, they already know what we're doing. Um, they, they, they're sending the students because although it's great to have a degree and I'm not knocking it, I got a couple of myself, including those damn student loans, okay? Um, oftentimes a degree is not going to get you the job you know, agencies in, in my specialty, they want to know, hey, have you li lifted a print? Hey, have you seen a dead body? Have you touched a dead body? Are you volunteering? You know, what what are your investigative skills? You know, do you know how to um, use photography? Do you know how to use a digital camera? And I'm not talking about an iPhone because you'd be, be surprised. And a lot of students say, well, you know, hey, Terry, I got an iPhone. <laughs> but I got it. So, again, you know, the universities. They already know what we're doing, and I'm very, very blessed that I'm in the position that I am. I just wanted to expand it because, again, I think the way things are going, the statistics are out there, people will tell you, and more and more universities are offering online type of courses to meet the needs and demands of busy people, you know, people that have, as I call it, the grown-up responsibilities of work, maybe two jobs, children, life, your dogs, your cat, whatever. So I knew early on, like I said, about, about five years ago, I, I wanted to do it. I just didn't know how until my sister said, hey, check this Udemy thing out. And although I'm happy I gave it a go, I kind of did it in a different type of way. And my funnel includes taking, a, I took my latest course and I transcribed it, put it in the book you know, and I'll do it that way. That's how I do it. Um, because again, you know, people want forensic related careers, so they just don't know how to start it. So that's really the, the message I usually will throw out to people here and there. And, and the courses that we offer that I have, you know, ranges from so many about, do you still need to use a business card? You know, things like that. Um, and then when we go to professional conferences, I make sure there's one coming up and here in Temecula, California, uh, that I'm sponsoring a couple of the, the, the events there. So my company is, I should say. And so you connect that way. But again, I've been doing this for such a long time that they know, hey, Terry, how's it going? You know, well, and so, yeah, I have that advantage, and I'm sure other people do. But then again, you know, the first time Udemy instructor may not. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good way to get your feet wet. Uh, but again, Tim, I look back on that first course, I'm thinking, yeah. what the what heck? The <laughs> Just that. I'm, I'm the same. It's yeah. Well, it served me well, and I've since revamped it um, uh, and, and added a lot more things. So it's, it was yeah. a learning thing, and I'm happy that I did it. I really am because I'm not shy in front of the camera. I'm sure all you guys can figure that out. So. <laughs> yeah, I must admit when I uh, when 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 you when you to me changed their, uh, their made their policies and sort of forced us to go back through our our past courses, and I went back to my first course, which is actually that taping course. What, that wasn't my first my first time on video, but it was my first um, course on Udemy, and, and I go back over the audio. and go, oh my god, that audio! And but I, I was I was actually using a, a proper it was a um, Audio Technica lapel mic, which Udemy actually recommended. You no, know, when they when they went to there, so I, I was. But no, this is over twelve months ago now, so the technology is, is absolutely you no know, changed so much, and and. And, but it's, it's crazy. I'd like to, to welcome people onto the call. Now, we've got a question from uh, Get Social Health to Terry saying, like, have you gotten your courses certified or is your name recognition enough? Uh, you know what? Uh, the certification, uh, it, it goes through, I'm sure you can understand, many governing bodies. Um, but I found that my name is is good enough, which again, I have to say, I'm very, very blessed. Uh, my core uh, staff of instructors, I've known them for a very long time, uh, and all of them, I'm sorry, except for one, I have seven on staff, 
except for one, just she recently retired from uh, LAPD, uh, Los Angeles Police Department, and all of them are still working. You know, we're talking about 15, 20, 22 years in the field. You know, I have crime scene investigators, uh, uh, corner investigators, and I can see my friend Darren Dake from Corner Talk. He just came on. You know, Darren has been a wonderful, wonder, wonderful connection. And he, too, shares our, really the same vision that I have. And it's, a, it's been a fantastic collaboration. So, you know what? I think the, just the instructors alone, because they are highly uh, interactive with their students, and more importantly, they are active in the forensic community, okay? I have one instructor who's a crime scene investigator, uh, for Pomona, California here, and uh, she's my master instructor, and she's, uh, next year she's going to be the president of one of these forensic uh, organizations. So again, you know what? Those names alone, including mine, will get them out there. But I am trying to look for the avenues to get the courses certified, um, because again, it's, it's, there are courses that are certified, and it's, it's a long process. So that is my, one of my bucket list uh, to hopefully it cross off in the next five years. So, but Darren, I'm hopefully Darren will get on here because he's got, yeah. he had the same, you know, experience on Udemy that I had. So, and I believe I recommended Udemy to him and he tried it as well. So actually that was a great question about certification because that, that is important. You have to, web, even if you're in a forensic position, you still have to get training, right? It doesn't end just because you get the position. You know that, Tim. It does not mm -hmm. end. You have to constantly be up on your game, right? You have to know the new technologies and, you know, the new apps. There's a lot of apps that are geared for crime scene investigators or just, you know, forensic professionals that they have to use. It's just so many things, you know. 20 years ago, who would have thought of a camera that gives you a 360 view of a crime scene? Who would have yeah. thought that? But you need to know how to use it, right? So, mm. yeah, mm. that's a great yes. question. Okay, so, well, what, what we'll do, what, so I'll, I'll officially thank you for, for your time and, and just saying, like, and, and in summary is that don't be concerned about your, your niche being too narrow. And, in fact, the narrower the niche, the more successful you're going to be. You've just got to look at the right channels and, and and platforms and and your your promotional channels to 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 uh, to get it out there, but don't ever think like there's there's no. billions of people in the world and and really if you do a, a good course you only really need you know, a couple of hundred or a thousand people to make a very good um, living from it. Okay, I'm yeah, going to open up this seat. And what I'm sorry, Tim. One more thing. You know what? Depending upon your niche. There might be a platform just geared for that. I know Darren and I both teach on law enforcement learning platform, and it's geared towards what? Law enforcement. So, you know, it depends upon, you know, what you're doing. So I, I agree with you. Don't give up just because you're so specialized. There's a way to do it. You just need to find that way. And along the way, you'll know what works and what doesn't. So, I'm, But I'm happy that I found... Fedora, and it was actually because yeah. of you, Tim. So I started <laughs> learning about all this stuff. So I'm thinking, let me try this. And trust me, I've tried about four different other platforms before okay. I, I hopped onto Fedora. Mm. Awesome. So, good stuff. Good. Darren, do you want to jump in the seat? I've actually got to go and get some more water. So if, if uh, Darren, if you want to, if you want to jump in and, and, and share your experience as well, because I think this is very important. Um, thanks, mate. And I'll. Get, You're gonna uh, love Darren. Darren's great. Awesome. I'll, I'm just gonna grab some water okay. and I'll be back. You, yeah. you two have a chat. As, answer the questions. <laughs> I will, hey, I'll Darren. Be, I'll be back in a I'll minute. Over, Tim. So, Darren, awesome. thank you for joining. Welcome. Welcome and, to see you again. Can you hear me okay? Because I don't have a microphone or nothing. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Tell okay. us about yeah, your experience just, from you to me. Well, Udemy won't let me on because my classes are all about death investigation. And so um, they won't let me, they, they, they flagged all my classes. So I can't teach on Udemy. But you're teaching on a couple of different platforms or just the one, what, what, where are you teaching? What, what platform are you using? Just law enforcement learning right now, lawenforcementlearning.com. Uh, those classes can go on there and that's fine. And, and I get a lot of students there. Uh, but Udemy won't let me because it mentions death. And, of course, I can't teach 
a death investigation topic without showing a picture or two and you to me flags it all. So now I I got around that because mine was more, uh, uh, I guess the theory behind drowning deaths uh, and what the body goes through. Yes. And I did have some, some, some sensitive type of pictures, but they didn't, uh, they didn't kick me off. So, but again, it really depends upon, the platform that you're going to be you know, going towards. And, and trust me, uh, I used, um, I think I used Pathright and then I used uh, school keep. I used that one and those just didn't feel right for me, um, you know, for, and for the classes that I wanted to teach. So whatever the, the specialty is, you have to find what's going to work for you. And in, in Darren's case, it didn't, it, the Udemy site didn't work. Because, again, his topic was death investigations, and you're going to be showing what? Well, of course, scenes that include decedents and, you know, the environment for that. And as a marketplace, I didn't think, and then Darren, I think he got frozen out. Um, I don't know okay. if Udemy was, was a place to have those types of courses. In the end, it turned out that it wasn't, because I think Udemy's take on that wasn't a positive one because why in my opinion that the niche was so specialized you know it's just a small amount of people of students that are wanting death investigation so both darren and, and i are on the law enforcement learning platform but in, in all platforms you know versus udemy you know you have to do your own marketing you have to you do your own promotion you have to get the word out there and that as everybody has told us and i've learned too that's that's just the beginning of the hard work. You thought being in front of a camera or talking was hard. That is, is hard. And everybody's geared towards, you know, for their own motivation to do that. But again, Darren and I kind of share that same ideal, you know, let's get the information out there. And Darren's one of those guys that he is um, an investigator, death scene investigator, but he gears his training more towards, you know, individuals that are already in the field. But so that's how we can do this cross promotion and collaboration, because you know what, if he has students, so they say, hey, Terry, because I've been on his his podcast a couple of times. And then if I have any questions about you know, what, what's this or what's that, and uh, Darren and I are collaborating with another business venture. So it's, it's a wonderful thing. You know, it's just a wonderful thing. So I'm hmm. sorry, Darren got uh, he got kicked shot. out. So I think because he was in his car. <laughs> Again, we well, could have been these things everywhere, so it's, it's all good. It could have been live internet. Stream. Yeah, live stream. Well, so it's, the, uh, it's the, great the, the seat is open. Um, yeah, look, and this is this is a very important point that you mentioned, Terry. Is that like the uh, the avenues or the channels for promotion are endless, and you've just got to sort of broaden your you know your thinking, open your eyes, or, or what or what we say is actually lower your eyes, and, and instead of just sort of you know, the head the head spinning, just sort of lower your eyes and have a look, and the. But when it, when it comes to collaboration, JVs, those, those, those sort of uh, situations can work really, really well with you because if you have somebody who already has a list, now, now like, like people talk, they turn around and they talk about Udemy and, and the 50% that Udemy take when, you, when they sell for you. But in affiliate marketing, 50% is actually, you know, it's not it's not too bad and and when you look at you know, Udemy they're the one that that is spending the money on the promotion and everything else that's fine and and I often talk about when you look at these other people who who go on to the, either use their own platform or Fedora and they've actually got to do their own marketing and, and they say like like one person had a when he when he launched okay he had a big list and when he launched he made over three hundred thousand dollars on his launch but when you looked at the you know, the breakdown he spent something like ninety thousand dollars on on marketing so you there there is a marketing component there and i think that's and that's also where you, where you, where you, your pricing comes into it too like you if you've got to if, if you if you're just selling courses for ten ten dollars and you're not getting the number of students and you can't afford the marketing you're just you're just going to roll roll around in circles and you're not going to go anywhere so you've got to pick your market so so firstly as you say quite rightly when it comes to a niche You've got to, well, when it comes to anything that you're creating, you've got to make sure that you're teaching what people want to learn, not simply create it and they will come. You've got to go to where they live and you've got to feed them what they eat, basically. So, so you know, 
and, and we come back to what no, Phil Edna was saying. So you can you can post your course on, on, on these different different platforms and you can also then go to suppliers. So say if you um, just try and look down to, to see any of these other other comments coming through and, and what other people and please if you if, if you want to jump in and ask a question or share what you've done, please that seat's open. You're more than welcome to jump in. This is this is what I did. Um when I decided to get the courses online and transfer them, that knowledge online, I looked at all the the schools, uh, the two-year schools that were offering criminal justice, science classes. I mean, who doesn't offer science classes? And any schools that were offering uh, forensic-related classes as well as photography classes. Because I tell my students, you want to get into this field, you best know how to use that camera. That's the biggest thing. So I started looking at all the schools, okay? Went on Twitter, right? Most schools now have their own Twitter account. And guess what I did? I started following them, started kind of looking at them. Then I started blasting, hey, you know what? Hey, this this and this school, here's what we got going. We'll have, you know, a student discount instead of, you know, $197, it's, you know, $50 or whatever, the, whatever I was doing. So I started doing it that way, okay? Then I started following my competitors. Remember, I, I did my homework. And there's only maybe about three different types of programs here in the United States that I could find, one in Texas and one in Florida. Um, and I started kind of looking at them, if they had any Facebook or what they were doing, what, how they were pricing their courses, what, you know. And so I followed them, too. So I want to see what they're doing. And it was just, again, by chance that I, I got a hold of Darren. I've gotten a hold of all these other people and people from the U.K. that want to collaborate and do some, hey, Let's try to do a blab about forensics. We've done a couple. So it's 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 a big world out there. You just have to find out where your students live. So that's, that's another thing I did. Yep. Uh, awesome. And, and 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 it's working for you. And it's great. And saying like you've you diversified. Is it cola? Is that is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Cola. Hi cola. guys. Hi, welcome. Hi, welcome, Hi, Cola. Hi, right. okay. So 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 what have you been doing? Uh, yeah, well, I'm actually just starting up a course on elevated pitches. Uh, so that's what I'm developing at the moment. Um, but I just wanted to jump in. Uh, first to say thanks. Love your podcast, Tim. Uh, and also agree, you put me onto Fedora. I was going to go the Udemy route, but um, you put me onto Fedora. So thanks for that. Um, my yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. There's probably yeah. quite a few people that you've done. Yeah, you've done well exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, my question was in terms of Udemy and using it for lead generation, do you su suggest using a, doing a free course for lead generation or should you still do a cheap course like a $10 course or whatever it is uh, to make yeah. people value it and then get the, the lead that way? So that was my quick question. Yeah, I think you, you, you can go you can go two ways. I know. Mark Timblate says that if you if you do a, a free course, you do open yourself up to probably more negative reviews because then people don't people don't value it. They, they, they jump on and and then you mm. they don't really have any skin in the game. And and some and some people just some people out there are just there to make your life a misery and they and they're going to give you a negative review even if you don't deserve it. And unfortunately, that's the way that you to me sort of. It's just part of the, you know, the rankings, and, and unless unless they break the rules, you and me aren't going to remove that ranking. So what what I would be doing is I would be making, and I, I, don't, I don't say make a subset of your um, your uh, premium course. I'd say create a whole new course, which is a sub which is which is a subset of, but not but not just taking out. Um, you know, if you say 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 if you say if your premium course is five hours, don't 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 just rip out a couple uh, an hour of, of that video and, and sort of try to lump into a course because that will also give you bad reviews because it's, it's probably not the, yeah the, the flow isn't there and also make sure that you are addressing a need and and that the 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 course is still a solution within itself and then you say this is this this is only an introduction and if you want some more information come here and, and get and get locked into your, to your premium so Personally, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do a free course. I would. I would, I would still make it. You no, know, a, a five dollar, like a ten dollar, whatever. Call it an introductory course, you know, because they are going to get something from. It. I think the, the most important thing is. I. I. I don't like the bait and switch. I don't like. Yeah. There's, there's. There's. There's lots. Lots of stuff out there, and, and unfortunately, Udemy is being flooded with 
um, mediocre courses. People are just seeing that oh, there's money to be made in online courses. I'm, I'm just going to throw this this course up, and it. And I see some of the prices, like they, like I because I review a lot of courses on on on. So I, I want to see what people are doing, and some of these things. And 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 you sit there and I say, well, that that was 45 minutes of my life I just lost, and. <laughs> And and, yeah. and 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 the person wants one hundred and ninety seven dollars for this. I'm going, and and I I, I don't write a negative review, right? I, I, I'm not going to put a one star review up. I, but I will sometimes I'll actually write to to, to the actual instructor privately. And I go, listen, you know, honestly, you you didn't you didn't provide anything, and you and you're charging this price. What are you doing? Uh, I mean, you've got to. You, I said it all, it all comes back to taking away a pain. So. When you say take this course and this is going to be the outcome if you follow the steps, then make sure they can actually get to that outcome, and and always give value. Like I think, you know, these Udemy is going to, you know, crash and burn if people continue just to, to to throw rubbish up there because then it's very hard. I see comments coming through all the time now. People saying there's so many to choose from, and and the hardest thing now is to actually find a value uh, and find a good course. And people are wasting a lot of their own valuable time on on courses that aren't delivering. So that's why I say probably free. I know I know people talk about free. You're not going to generate a lot from from free. I once again I interviewed another guy called John Purcell, and he has over 400 420,000 students in a free course of his. He, it's, a, it's a Java programming course, and he's got. A, he says it's only a very small percentage of those. Come over to his paid course, but as he's saying, like when you got, when you got four hundred twenty thousand, a small percentage, just a lot of money. Like he he still makes you know twelve twelve thousand US a month, and he he works half an hour a day if he feels like it. But you know, and and probably those sorts of, sorts of days are over now because there's so many courses and, and so many options. You're not you you're probably not going to get that traction like the the, the early adopters did. Um, plus but you, yeah, I plus you want. You want the students who are serious about it, not students who will just collect courses because they can. Uh, mm. And I say that because, you know, I have, I think to date, I think 12 courses that I haven't looked at. Uh, mm. But if you pay for a course, you're more mm. apt to you know, engage with it, complete it. And you want to get your name associated with um, something that is a value of worth. Now, again, if somebody can't afford ten dollars, I completely understand that. Uh, but if I had to do it over again, I would not have offered one course for free. I would have started off with a paid course. So, uh, you know, and you should do some testing. Um, Alan Hill, like one of the things he always hammered down on us: test, 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 test. So you could do a cousin course, as I'd say. That is related to a paid course, but I agree with Tim. I would not do this bait and switch thing because you know if you're just copying a lecture and then here you go for free, you know what your your students, your potential students are going to feel ripped off. And then where's your name? Your name is down in the toilet. And it's a lot harder to get out. So you want to start off with your reputation here and then give the value whether it's it's a free course or not. But I I agree with Tim. I I wouldn't start off with a free thing. I mean before. Before the climate changed in Udemy, I think that was a great uh, a tool, marketing tool, if you will, but not the way it is now. It's not like that anymore. So you got a lot of lot of people throwing courses up there just because they have a computer and they think they know how to relate that information. I'm trying to be nice, okay? So and trust me, I've seen some of those things. So. And I've taken courses on Udemy just to see how it all flowed together. And yeah. hey, what equipment are you using? Blah, 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 blah. And I can tell you that, you know what? In my limited knowledge, when I first started out, I was an expert compared to them. So, you know, you have to be careful what you're producing because, again, we live in a world where all this social media will follow you, even though you delete it, it's still there. So, you want to align yourself with your reputation being here. Uh, because once it gets started, gets tainted, it's, you know, they'll say, hey, Terry put out this horrible course. Don't take any of her pay courses. You know, you don't want that. Not that that's happened to any folks, but yeah. 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 That's, <laughs> yeah. that's so true. I think it always, always deliver value. Always have your name associated with value and and, and, and solving solutions and helping people and you never go wrong. And, and, and I always talk 
10x because I think this 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 is the other thing that I'm seeing more and more of is that people put a price on a course on Udemy with no expectation they're even going to make that because because they know that Udemy are going to discount so 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 they'll put ninety seven dollars on a course that they know is not even worth ninety seven. Well, I don't I I don't like that approach either, right? I say you 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 make your course, you put a hundred dollars value into that course. Now whether now whether you whether you actually you know, put a put a, a price point on it not at ninety seven dollars or forty seven dollars, knowing full well that, that that Udemy are going to sell it for ten, but at least when that when that student takes that course, they go, Wow, I've actually got some value here. And it it as as, as Terry says, that builds your your, your your reputation and 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 when word gets out saying, well, look, no, I got good value from that course, but yeah, I'd 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 create my premium course first, and then I'd and I'd even so sort of look at what part of that premium course do people have the most difficulty with? Where can you sort of sort of go into a little bit more detail there? Or what questions? So, so, so when your students are, are coming back to you and interacting with you with your premium course, what what questions are they asking the most of? And create create a sub course based on those questions. Because once again, now as Terry said, now when, when she was doing her research, you listen to the market. And if, if you if you answer questions in your course, then you are actually guiding the students through to a solution. So that's what I would do. All right, great. Thanks for that. Yeah. Pleasure. Thanks for that. Okay, I better jump off, I guess. Uh, it's, it's nice meeting you, Carla. Yeah, I do. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yes. Another thing, you know, I think everybody has to find what works best for them. And, you know, that has been said many, many times while I was doing my own research and trying to find where to put my classes. Um, you know, some people host their own through WordPress. I tried that, and that was a lot of work for me. You mm. know, I, I no. People mm. love it, though. Some people really love it. Great. Kudos to you. Um, again, while you were gone, Tim, I was, I was giving some examples of some other platforms I use. It was one, uh, Pathrite, which they're still in existence. Another one, Schoolkeep, which I thought was uh, going, became an unfit. Um, and then, you know, I, I found uh, Udemy. And then there was all these other platforms that were coming out. And two mm. weeks later, poof, you know, they're, yeah. they're gone. So, you know, I really started looking at and listening to the online marketing uh, type of world. And all of a sudden, again, it was your, you, Tim, uh, you and Mark, and I think Eileen, um, Eileen Smith, talking about things. And then it was just Fedora. And I was cam coming, you know, hem hemming and hawing whether or not I wanted to go that route seriously. Because, you, you know, you talk about it and then you make that decision. But for me, the hard part was, how do I get uh, a particular course, which one we just did, which was uh, positional asphyxiation. And for those of you that don't know it, it, it really is when an individual has died because of the way they've fallen. Okay. And so how do you translate that from an on-site course to an online course? And that was really easy to do because here's, here's the theory. Here's the examples. This is what... And then we follow up with, with the actual case studies. So, and, and seeing photos and things like that. And I was very protective about uh, showing scenes because again, you know, my type of material as well as Darren's material, these people, you know, mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, you know, sisters, brothers, they were very respectful for that. And they, you know, they lost their life because of circumstances. So I was very careful about that. That's why, again, as I said before, for the Udemy platform, I was, I was kind of hesitant and I, I scaled back on, on the scenes that I was showing. But in Darren's case, because I saw some of his, uh, his classes on Udemy, you know, it's, it's, it's all in your face. So, but how can you teach that? And then you're restricted. It's, it's it's difficult. But again, we have other courses like a, a basic crime scene investigation course. Part of that includes a, a practicum. You know, they they have uh, about eight hours to do a crime scene all on their own. I can't do that online. So mm -hmm. again, that's why I'm kind of looking for uh, things that will be more interactive, and I can show them things such as how to, you know, dust and lift a print. You know, you use this type of powder, things like that. Which I can still do that on the video. But it's kind of better when there's a, a two-way versus a one-way uh, lecture, you know, conversation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. 
very much I think very well when people are, you know, uh, talking to me, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, I'm sure all you guys can tell. I, I just love talking. And this type of platform, Blab, I could keep going. And I, people have done Blabs for three hours. I'm thinking, yeah, I could do that <laughs> if I had three hours, but I don't. So, yeah. Just no, the sure. yeah, yeah. So, you know, it does happen. I know the more listeners. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, I listen to you on your podcast because I walk, uh, I probably walk about seven miles a day. That's my exercise and training for a big bike ride next year. So I just throw you on and keep going. So that is good. I can do that. But, you know, uh, you know, again, it, 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 it's a lot of interactive and it's a, it's a lot of energy you have to put out to be, quote unquote, on stage as, a, as an instructor. So that's what I feed off of. And that, for me, is what's missing on an online platform. That's just, mm. that's how I get fed by the students, if you will. Mm. So yeah. and I love connecting with people that way, that one-on-one. -on -one. But if I could way. find, way. yeah, if I could find, uh, you know, a combination of, you know, Fedora and this interactive live lecture, then I, I, I'll be the first one to, to sign up. So hopefully we'll, we'll find one and it'll be all good. It's good. Mm. So. Mm. For sure. And I think once again, it comes down, because when you, when, when you start to start to utilize this, this technology, like you might um, incorporate webinars, which are live. So whether you're actually doing a talking head or whether you're doing a, a, a slide presentation or a mixture of both. And then you've got your, you know, your student comments down the side and so they can actually ask you questions. I think Blab is great, but unfortunately in a, in a teaching scenario, in a course scenario, if somebody's spending a lot of money, we can't make, if we, if we had a choice, if we had an opportunity to make Blab private, so, so we could sort of just do, then if this, this this would be the bee's knees, but you know, Blab say that they're not going to to um, ever incorporate right. private because they, because there's plenty of other there's plenty of other platforms where you can do private stuff. So you now you can you can do stuff on Skype on on um, Google Hangouts. So 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 there's free options, there's paid options, but I think you know, if you're going to really sort of start to educate and not and not and not just make information products i like like i i'm going to do a, a podcast and i'm looking for a co-host looking for a co-host for an, another podcast on turning publication into education right and i think this is this is the this is, i said we are at a crossroads now and there and there is going to be a very definite line drawn in the sand there's going there's, there's going to be the udemy style which is just simply education products and then there's actually going to be education where there's live tutorial there's there's lots of access to the to the instructor and people are going to be willing to pay for that that's, that's going to be a premium service because there is time involved like it's not just you know create it once and and let, let it sell forever there is still a time commitment but it's not a one-on-one -on -one coaching like i said like you can you can put you know, 50 people into a program you can put 100 people into a program and, and that program might be a three or six month program and it can be a subscription thing so it still can be affordable like, like it might be a 47 dollar a month subscription it might be a 97 dollar a month subscription so it can still be affordable but, that, but they've got you and, and what you've got to do is then you've got to cover your costs so so if you are uh, then have to subscribe to you know, to a webinar service that's quite expensive um right. you know, and, and also just cover your time but i think as i said there there, there is a, def a definite shift in being an educator and being one who actually likes to talk to people this right. is um, there, this there is, is a I, you know I, I think that one of the first blabs I did again when I started teaching back in August uh, we were doing something about criminalistics versus forensic science and you know in rea they're they're kissing cousins and you know I invited my students from my class but you couldn't just hold the students there you know it was open for them so then it turned out to be a great blab because everybody else was coming in about, hey, what about this? And, you know, how do you do get that? And things like that. So that was good in itself, but I would never, ever do a uh, live lecture or a blab such as this showing uh, sensitive type material. I would yeah. never, ever do that. It's just, yeah. you know, this type of forum is great. And it's got a lot of great uh, things going for it. But for me, and I think some other educators, it's just not the platform to use in a lecture type when you're mm. showing certain things. So, you know, again, um, you know, the nature of my business is, you know, there's a crime scene that's happened. Otherwise, they don't call out the crime scene investigator. So, you know, and with crime scenes, you're going to expect to see certain things that are deemed graphic, 
uh, or disturbing. So, you know, they have to get geared for that. And, you know, again, you never know. We have lurkers and, and people, you know, coming into chat rooms and things like that and Periscope and they're saying all these crazy things. So if you can imagine, here's a picture of a decedent, you know, gunshot wound or whatever. I, I can only imagine that. And Darren and I had a long talk about that one. Mm. So you, gotta, you have to just be careful uh, what you're presenting, how you're presenting it, and where you find it to be home. And for me, again, as I said before, it's Godora. It's, it's, it's home for me. And it's very mm. easy to produce the courses on that particular platform. So... Mm. And I think a lot of Fedora uh, users and teachers, they, they, they see that, they feel it. I can't describe it. If you guys, if you guys are using something else, you know, good, good, great for you. But I've, I've tried a lot of them and I just, I just stuck with Fedora. It was just the greatest thing for, a great fit for me. So in my courses. And, and what I like about Fedora too, is that you actually are in control. You're not, you don't, you don't have these, these rules. I know, I know Udemy is a, is a marketplace and they've got, uh, thousands of instructors and some do the wrong thing, some do the right thing. So they're trying to protect their, their investment, but I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't know whether I'm a bit of an anarchist, or whatever. I just don't like being told what to do. And I don't, I'd like to be in control of my own course and everything else. Hey, Dana. Hi. Um, sorry. I came in a little late. Um, are you saying Pedora or Fedora? Fedora. Fedora. Tim will write it down. Right. I'll, I'll, put it, I'll put it into the uh, I'll put it into the link Fedora, for you. FS and Frank. And but I, it's actually it's actually the it's the the website is actually called Use Fedora yeah. because Fedora is some open source something other and it's also a hat. Yeah, so right. We don't, we don't know why they actually called it Fedora, <laughs> but but there's but there's a link there in the oh, in, in the chat you. for you. Yeah, and, thank and, you. and if, you, if you've got a if you've got a, an existing Udemy course, you can actually just click a button and it will import. Your uh, your existing Udemy courses as well, right? That, yeah, that I've never used use that. Do you have I, classes I, on Udemy? Yeah, I I actually have done the the um the the membership website using um WordPress, and it was challenging. And after I was hacked for about the third time, I gave up. <laughs> so mm. just. You know, it's it, it was hard to fight off the hackers. So the last time I was hacked, I just threw in the towel and and now I just do webinars. Yeah. What, uh, this... Dana, what, what webinar platform are you using? Go to webinar. Yeah. And it, it does add up, doesn't it? The cost, the cost of the cost of your. Um, oh, right. Yeah, right. So, so what I did was I got a sponsor, oh. and the sponsor helps offset the price. So right. that works out. So I wanted to make that suggestion because it really helps you if you get a sponsor, because then um, it'll help you, you know, with the fees. Mm. Yes, mm. I've done. Uh, we did many when I first started off. I was doing a lot of webinars, and uh, you know what? I would have to say that was the most the easiest way to get uh, my word out there get you know teaching things um, did some paid and not paid and it was an easy easy platform um, but I yeah. wanted more I wanted wanted the ability to add more to a content so for example if I wanted to add another case study I couldn't do that on a webinar now I will tell you that I have um, the I think the 11 webinars that I did that were paid I have repurposed them and created them into courses on Fedora, okay? But I've added, so it's not just the replay of the webinar, it's things added to that. And that was the thing that was, is lacking for a webinar. If I wanted to show them a different case or update them on a case sure. or you know, things like that. So I agree with you, the webinar was good because one, you could record it, and two, you know what, you have this interactive type thing. That's why, again, I'm constantly searching right. for something that can, you know, marry the two things together, this, this yeah. live type of teaching as well as, you know, recorded videos and things like that. So I'm, I'm, I know that there's a way to do it and I'm bound to find it. Yeah. So yeah. Webinars. I would, I would completely agree. The other and good then thing about I sent, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I, I, I said, I said, the other good thing about platforms like Fedora and, and Ed Loud and, and, and these other platforms is that you can actually bundle courses together 
and you can also have, mm. have, have multiple price. So, so you can say just buy the course or you can buy some course with some with, you know, with some coaching. So, so you can have you know, tiered tiered pricing and you can also set it up so that it's, it can be a subscription base. So, so you can say that you know it's, it's a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription or a, a lifetime subscription. So right. you've got a, a lot oh. of versatility. And the other thing too is then you, you are actually protected so you don't have to worry about being hacked because they're going to take care of all that security, all the updates. They're going to make sure that their, their platform is you know, is running squeaky clean, and Good you can you know, host 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 those, those those webinars and all that sort of stuff as well. So yeah, it's a good thing to look at. It's I, I tried I, I tried to host my own stuff as well, and I will try again because I want to set up something with a affiliate program to JV Zoo and. So now, the, the one thing I think Mark Mark Timberlake said that, uh, and what I did do. I think he did that. He had classes on Udemy, and then he had those exact same classes on Fedora, and it kind of, you know, messed up the, his his audience, if you will. So that's why I'm a big advocate that if you're going to have a class, that this major class, but you want to offshoot the, maybe a, a smaller class from it, you know, the smaller class will have some content, but it's not the repeated content in your bigger class. Because again, to me, I if I had that. If I was a student, I would feel ripped off. Well, hey, I already saw this and I already paid ten dollars for this. Why am I paying fifty dollars for that when I just paid ten? Should I pay forty? No, you don't want. You don't want to get into that. So yeah. I know because I use Fedora, you can have the different pricing structures, like Tim said, and you can have a, a basic one. I have one class uh, that's got a basic, and then uh, I think as it, it adds up, or the three different pricing structures. structures there's an ebook and then there's other case studies and then there's a bonus video. So that's what you nice. want to do. So, you know, and then I so think one of the I like that subscription. You said they can subscribe yes. to you. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can, they, they, they so can you can charge like a monthly. monthly subscription fee? Correct. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, wow. Right. Thank so I'm you thinking so about much. Yeah, it, it, I'm thinking about doing it, um, you know, having the subscription and then on a monthly thing. And each month there's a new case study. So, you know, that's so it's, it's a constant sure. change of, you know, this lecture, you know, type material plus the case study. So that is one of the things I yep. am considering doing. And then you kind of, you know, sure. you, yeah, you should really look into it. And then if you like I'm doing, I'm, I have this secret uh, Facebook group that, that will feed into right the, yeah. the subscription. So that's how I, yeah, I have it. those. Yeah, that's mm. great. So I love it. <laughs> so what 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 else do you do, Tim? He does yes. it all. <laughs> well, yeah, I I'm uh, obviously I, I'm an online instructor. I've got my podcast, so I'm also branching into to coaching, and I'm also branching into production. So I offer production services. Or co co production services. Um, outside of that, I'm actually a soft tissue therapist. I've actually got to go to a clinic uh, shortly and, and start sticking. We do something called dry needling, which is we use acupuncture needles, but it's not acupuncture. And and so I've, I've looked after elite athletes for about 12 years. And I still work with athletes, but I don't work in in teams anymore. But for for all that time, right now throughout my entire working career, I've always been a trainer or a or a coach in some in some whether whether I was teaching people how to use a, com a computer software package. I've I've, I've taught massage. Um, I, nice. I, I I just I just I just teach. I know I teach strapping. So I've always been in a, in a situation where I've been a you know, trainer, support, instructor, coach, yeah, instructor, yeah, a teacher. And you're a in teacher. the UK. No, Australia. So it's it's actually uh, oh, pardon 10, me. 10, 10, 10, 22 in the morning. Uh, we, well, we, we <laughs> colonials. Now we, we came, we came from the, from the, from the ships from, uh, from right, England. Right, right. Close <laughs> I'm from Florida, and where are you at? Um, it's Terry. Terry. I'm in Southern California, oh, where okay. it's nice and hot, and I hate the heat. <laughs> right, that's where I'm at. So yep. near, near Los Angeles. Yeah, near Los Angeles. Yeah, great. I love California. Oh just yeah, just want to rain. I was just there a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah, so it's good. 
Okay. Well, thank awesome. you so much for the thank information. You. It's very valuable. I, I appreciate you sharing it. And I, I do a lot of um, eBay instruction and I teach people eBay all over the world and I Skype yeah. And webinars have been my biggest uh, platform. And then um, I also do email marketing with Constant Contact. So combining all of that, um, I'm always looking for new avenues. And now Blab is my new addiction. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing yeah. platform for for yeah. connection and, and and instant like instant connection. There's there's no sort of back and forth. It's it's like they get to see you. It's it, it it's very raw. Like you're sitting in my lounge room. Yeah. Actually, actually, when I no, yeah. no, when I, when I stand up, that's my that's my background for when I'm when I'm videoing my courses right behind me. Yeah. So yeah. absolutely wonderful. So <laughs> great. I'm in my yeah. kitchen right now, so it's all good. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think you. Yeah, there you go. As part of the kitchen, there. There you go. <laughs> oh, so you can cook and blab. What more? <laughs> right. So, well, I don't know about that, but right. I'm <laughs> good. Uh, yeah. Well. Okay, so guys. Thank well, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Thanks, nice meeting you. Okay, nice I'm going to also have to know. call this call this session to an end because I actually do have to. Uh, to jump in, so Tara, look, thank you very, very much for your time. Like what, you know, what you shared today, I think has given people a lot, a lot of hope and a, a lot of insight. Saying, okay, now if I'm going to create a course that isn't mainstream, I can still be very successful as long as I listen to my audience. So, so I find my audience, I go where they live, I am open to a range of different channels to bring people in. Or I might already have a list. Like if, if I'm already in a in, in a specific niche, I might, might already have a list. So I've got something to to go to, and that the, probably the best the best platforms. If you don't want to worry about technical stuff, because if you if you're going to host on your own WordPress site, you've got a whole heap of technical heartache and headache. So if you don't want any of that, then then sites like Fedora, Ed Edloud, the, these sorts of sites are the place to go because you've got total control and and and, it, and then they're not going to dictate to you what content you can have whereas you no know, no sources like 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 you to me will and if, if if you are in a in a niche people are going to be searching for that niche they're going to find you whereas they're not going to stumble upon you in a marketplace like like you to me right other well, well, you know, I, I i agree you know and i know you got to go uh, I gotta walk my dogs too. Uh, here's the thing, you know, I love baseball. Okay, I'm a big baseball fan here in, in LA. Not a Dodgers fan. It's, a lot, it's the Angels for me. But that's not the only game here. Okay, and it's the same thing for online learning and platforms. Udemy is not the only thing. You just have to find what's going to work for your particular specialty. And just because everybody and their brother, like nine people out of ten, you know, are on Udemy, that doesn't mean that you have to be or you have to use it in the same way. It may not work for you. So you have to find the way that it will work. And don't freak out if it doesn't, because there's other things that will, okay? I have to go through that and experience that myself. So you know what? Again, Udemy is not the only game in town. There's other avenues, you just have to find them, mm. okay? You just have to use them and just test, 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 mm. right? Like that's Alice it. Said. So, that's like I always okay. say, no, Udemy is a yeah. cog in the wheel, it's not the wheel. And you and you can and you can use Udemy as lead generation back to a premium product, but don't don't right. just because who knows what's going to happen with Udemy? Like already right. Udemy is saying you can only price between this and this, and you can only do this. Like they're going to change all the time, so you don't want to be sort of tied into a point where one day they go turn around and go, you know what? You can only you can only price your courses at five dollars, and that's it because because our this is what our research says. You've got right. to you've got to sort of diversify and 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 sort of. Know, so you see it's around the place. Any, right. Exactly. Any, any any final thoughts before before we, we close, Terry? No, you know what I one one thing is don't don't throw in the towel. This is really what you want to do and share your knowledge and your expertise. As I said before, find a way, find what's going to work for you and just do it. And just because it doesn't succeed in one way, uh, it might succeed in another way because even if it like in my case, you know, the courses didn't sell very well. I wasn't out to make, you know, $12,000 a month. It would have been nice. But that just propelled me to look elsewhere. So you got to look at stuff 
in that type of manner. You just have to, there's a roadblock, you kind of go around it. If you plan a trip and the road is washed out, are you going to go home? No, you're going to find a way around it. So that's that's my whole philosophy and philosophy in life. So, yeah. but it was great being here. Thank mm. you so very, very much. I, I appreciate it tremendously. You have no idea. And I love sharing and blabbing with you and the people that were here. It was a great, great afternoon on my yeah, time. And awesome, Terry. And I really, really appreciate you coming and sharing because I said you have such an important message to you know to my audience both now and in the future because we know that podcasts are immortal and this and this this podcast will be listened to over and over again and it's such an important message about about niching and and just you know there, there, there is a way to succeed no matter what you want to teach you just got to go right. to the right places yeah. and teach what people want to learn yeah. not what you want to teach as yeah. you, right you, right you, you will yeah. succeed if you are teaching what they want to learn Correct. So it's not because I'm sick for this stuff. I love this forensics. But you know what? You know, I like a certain topic in forensics doesn't mean that you're going to. So exactly. if anybody needs to get a hold of me again, it's Terry Armenta at Forensic Training Unlimited dot com. Just follow me on Twitter, which is Forensic 187. If you guys don't know what 187 is, it's the PC code for murder. Oh, so there you go. Yeah. Do you want to drop those stuff, things yeah. into the chat, please, Terry? And we'll. um. And I'll, I'll sign off. So I'm just going to hit the, we're going to stop recording in about two seconds. Okay. So thanks again.